this podcast could potentially have adult language, adult themes, definitely drinking, and possibly the possibility of sexual content. <clears throat> Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Drinking with Authors, the Literary Briefs Edition. I am your host, Erica Lance. With me today is Mark Muncy from Erie Travels. Um, and I just uh, have to throw this in before we get to our amazing guest. If you are not already listening, me and Mark have started a new podcast, mainly Mark and I jumped on board, called Erie Travels, oh. where we discuss all things creepy, eerie, weird, cryptids, ghosts, goblins and true life things our first episode is actually called cocaine bear because that is a real thing that the movie is based off of yep. so yes it's brilliant it's a brilliant episode but anyway check <laughs> us out we'd love to have you over there um our guest today is the absolutely amazing jeffrey falcon loud Woo! okay Woo i really want nickelodeon and i want to be able to say you know, I don't know and get yeah. slimed right now because I felt that would be appropriate for this. Um, let's talk about what we're drinking real quick. Um, I am finishing up, and you should be able to tell this, my voice is a little off, but I'm finishing up a hot toddy that has some lovely whiskey, honey, and lemon in it. Still a little warm, helping me from the lovely bug my granddaughter gave me at her first birthday. You gotta love that. Oh. Um, Mark, what are you drinking? Uh, I am drinking from our wonderful friends at the Coffee Shop of Horrors, Ichabod's Dane Pumpkin Spice Coffee. I'm the designated driver, so for the episode. So, uh, um, yeah, and, and it's cold down here. It's one of those weird, you know, one of our three random days of winter down here in Florida. So, you know, got to do what we got to do. So, well, and I love the mug. I love the mug. Oh, I have to give a shout out. Jay said my friend bought me this mug like 30 years ago. That is. So it was because of the time. And he actually had a hard time finding it. Now people would be like, that's dumb. But back then, yeah, because I love to drink tea so much that he would have to get me refills. So he decided to get me a mug that would hold three cups of tea. That's nice. That was the whole thing. And it said the boss, which was really funny, but it has survived many a journey this lifetime. Um, uh, Falcon, Falcon, what are you drinking? I am drinking mostly water with some vodka mixed in so I can stay warm and hydrated in this colder than expected week, despite the warm week it was previously. Oh, I do understand that. I do understand that. Okay, you ready for your rapid fire questions? Yes. What is your favorite book of all time? Probably The Magic of Xanth, the one that combines the first three together. Oh, wow. Yeah. From Pierce Anthony, right? Yep. My dad actually used to read me after, you know, <laughs> covering some of the language a little bit, uh, <laughs> that and Harry Potter to bed. Very, very cool. Combo. What is your least favorite book? God, I don't even remember. I know exactly which one it is, but I, it's the only book I've ever thrown away. Ooh. I don't even remember what it was. I guess it was that bad. Wow. <laughs> Blocked wow. it from the brain. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of slime in your universe would you be? Ooh. Well, you got to throw me the hard ones like that. Uh, I've been shoot. drinking whiskey for an hour. I would probably probably go lesser, no, not lesser mimic. I would probably go gray slime. Gray slime is one of the tier one slimes, so first evolutions from a normal slime, and it has several different useful branches, if depending okay. on what it eats. So like a sword slime, or armor slime, or magic slime, or gelatinous slime, which is an obvious homage to the gelatinous ooze even though that one is a dead end okay okay i like it uh -huh. what about um what kind of uh 
because you you run so many dungeons besides slimes, obviously. What is your favorite monster? I would probably say either goblin or kobold. Uh, in in the world that I made, those two evolution charts uh, also go equally in pretty unique in uh, various directions. The goblins having the a lot of the traditional demi human type. Uh, monsters associated with it, and then the kobolds, uh, because a lot of Eastern culture treats them as as furry things, gnolls. Whether uh, whether the Western side, us usually treat them as more scaly. And I I put them both together so you could evolve in either direction. Nice. Very cool. What nice about one. um? Your what is a book that you love to reread? Book that I love to reread. That kind of changes because at some point I can't I can't reread a book anymore for a time just because I you're too aware of it. Uh, but I would have to say the one that I listen to the most would probably be Poor Man's Fight by Elliot K. Why? I honestly, I really couldn't tell you. It's it, it and then it sequels Rich Man's War, Dead Man's Debt, so on. I just, it's my favorite series of all time. But it's, it's, a, it's a sci-fi series and it's primarily okay. a military sci-fi series. Yeah. But I guess it's just because I love the main character so much and connect with him, which is funny because he's the main character, not because of any you know particular feat of strength or whatnot. He reads a lot. That's his yeah. thing. Something goes wrong. Well, he knows how to use tools because he, he read the manual. That's <laughs> I, I, I just cool. I guess I connect to that a lot. Nice. But it's also really well written fiction. I I love to shake Elliot K's hand one day. So who is the f a favorite author you've gotten to meet that you've sort of fanboyed over? Probably Gail Z. Martin. Yeah. Uh, I read her ne Necromancer. The Necromancer. Yeah, the Necromancer book back in middle school after sneaking it from my dad's library section. And I still have that copy to this day. It's kind of uh, beat up a little bit, but it was a huge, thick little book and I enjoyed it. And I got to meet her at Dragon Con. And I, yeah. for the love of God, I forgot to bring the book for her to sign twice now. I was oh, on a panel with her, did the same thing. <laughs> mm. I was even on a panel with her and forgot the book. So. Mm. Yeah, I was I was on a panel with her this year. I'm like, well, this would be perfect opportunity. But so, uh, I fanboyed a little bit. All right, my question is: favorite guilty pleasure fantasy movie? Hmm. Or do you have one? I does Midway count? Sure. Because that's, I, once again, I don't know why, but I watched that movie more times than any other. And I mean, it's not, it's historical fiction, honestly, but you watch I, I just really like it for some reason. You watch the OG or the extended edition? There's an extended edition. There's an extended edition. It's like four hours long. Yeah. That was, because it originally was broadcast in two halves. Uh, that was, was really a four hour cut that they cut. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I mean the modern one. Oh, the they modern midway. The okay. Indie company. Okay. See, I should have guessed. You went OG there. Uh, no. Sorry. I know what I was, you're I was going about, by hit. I was I was so happy to hear Midway because that's one of those movies that I turn on the right. old the old uh, the old one from the '60s. So it's right, right. So, so that's a bit out of my uh, my my age range. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm old. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. well, well done, Mark. Dragon well, is okay. All right. So then, uh, so you are, you mentioned Babylon Five. All right. So are uh, you uh, a Jakar or a Malari fan? Shoot. 
I would have to say Jakar just because of the character growth. Hmm. Uh, but Malo my last D and D campaign, I channeled my inner Malari for my Dragonborn <laughs> character, and I I love that character so much. I I can I can do the voice now if you'd like. <laughs> well, give yes. us give us something. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Hello. Uh, my name is Scalehog, the sorcerer. And it, yes, that, that over there is old. Now, he is touching the dead body. He does that. It's okay. And, oh, and this, this is the, 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 the cute little Akara. Yes, yes, the, the surface dwarf. And uh, it, it, excuse me, are, are, the, are those gems? <laughs> Very well done. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so. Um, if you could be any mythical or fantastical creature, what would you be? A well-paid employee. <laughs> that is, I like it. Touche. Touche. With excellent well benefits, good vacation time, stable living conditions, the ability to sleep on time. I like it. What about your favorite weird food combination? so i'm half hispanic i don't look it because i got my dad in me but uh i it's hard to say because a lot of strange combinations make sense if you're in a different part of the world. okay uh, hmm, i would if I was just Southern, I would I would just say chicken and waffles and leave it at that. But that is not a weird food combination. That's normal. It, 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 no, the first normal. time I heard it, I thought this is the weirdest combination I have ever heard. But honestly, I would have to say that the strangest thing that I've I've ever had is fried ice cream. Again, yeah, staple. Yeah. It's I like not it. my personal favorite. I, I just go for milkshakes, generally speaking. But it was a interesting and novel experience. Nice. So what is your uh, uh, favorite book to, or, yeah, book to either a TV show or a movie or a series? Like, where do you think they did a really good job? Hmm. Yeah, that really does get tricky, especially these days. I would, for the movie, I would have to say the first and second Harry Potter movies. Uh, things things changed after. They were still good, but they I, I wouldn't say the quality and all the details were kept as nicely. Uh, for TV show, honestly, it's not, it's, it's only kind of, that category but i have to say star wars the clone wars is my favorite just tv show that you know comes from a different media uh i the, the way that they grew the universe the way that they characterized all of these characters who were otherwise just sort of there and in, in the movies and never had any speaking lines whatsoever uh, i would say that that series and especially the 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 latter season are my absolute favorite. Very cool. Very cool. Mark? Uh, now, my question is, uh, so do, when you write, do you listen to any particular music or do you have other things on in the background or are you dead silence? So I have a YouTube playlist, uh, one for, for soundtracks from video games and the other one I just call writing songs and I throw anything in there. But the best thing that I like listening to, even if it's just a start, is the soundtrack for Metroid Prime. Can't argue that one. That one definitely rocks. So, all right. Um, and then if you were to, uh, let's see. So you're, you know, you're, you're, what's your, your favorite character in one of your books? Uh, who is it? Describe them a little bit. And then who you would cast as that character. Okay, so th that last one was a curveball. Mm. Shoot. 
I really want him to say some sort of slime and then say Slimer from the original Ghost. <laughs> if it is a slime no. and you just need to cast the voice, just the voice. <laughs> Um, so, so just for the purposes of a movie or TV show adaptation, it would probably have to be Marston from my Bio Dungeon series, the main character. Uh, and then for the actor, you mean Spike? You know, I've already oh. forgotten his name, but he he plays Spider Man and uh, Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie. Oh, Tom Holland. Thank you, Tom Holland. I know it's kind of a throwaway, but I can't really think of any any other actor who could play a teenager. And honestly, you know, it's not like he can play teenagers forever, even though he looks super young. Uh, and I really like that character because I think I did a just a wonderful job growing him uh, as an orphan who literally had you know, memory issues and was dying, it would have died if it, you know, hadn't been for the sake of a plot in the dungeon, uh, to, to becoming somebody who, who people actually counted on, who, who actually gave him love and affection, and he himself felt like he deserved that at the very, at the very end. Uh, so very happy with that particular character. Maybe not the most trope-free character with some of the things, but relatable and, and likable, I would say. Nice. Speaking of tropes, what's your favorite trope? So the actual answer would be the tropes that I've created in, in the subgenre of Dungeon Core that I started. Uh, even though it's it's not big or long enough to say that these are tropes, but there are things you need to have, like the uh, the side character to serve as dialogue for the dungeon instead of just a solo monologue. But if we're just talking about tried and true, tried tested tropes, it would it would definitely be the underdog who doesn't, you know, rise up because he magically gets some, I don't know, a system or a relative or, you know, just some overpowered way of overcoming his troubles, but he solves his own troubles, right? He puts in the hard work and he, he makes the connections himself to, uh, to overcome whatever trouble, you know, landed him there in the first place. And I, there's various examples of that I found both in uh, Eastern and Western literature that I've enjoyed. The Eastern literature I've found has a hard time trying to keep the overpoweredness coming from the beginning, even though they can sometimes go for like two or 3,000 chapters. Very cool. Okay, Mark, I've got two more again, and then you get the final question. So, um, uh, to just throw an absolute other curveball, do you believe in ghosts? I believe in in spirits. I believe that when I also do woodworking and some other craft stuff, I believe that when a person puts their time into something, that they are they are literally imbuing a part of their life, a part of their finite amount of time into whatever they're crafting. And that the pride and spirit is in that thing that they've done. Uh, as, a, as the idea of just your soul exiting your body and not going to heaven or hell and being trapped on earth, my just direct answer is I don't know. I'm a science guy just by nature, and I'm also religious. And so I would say that I, I want more information. I want to know more before I say yes or no. Okay, and do you believe in aliens? I think that there, there is a greater than zero possibility that there is other life out in the universe. I just have a hard time believing that we're significant enough for aliens to actually give a crap about us. Oh, I don't think they give a crap about us. I think they give a crap about our resources. <laughs> True. Okay, that is an excellent point. 
because they're we're not sitting down having conversations with them. They're coming and taking shit. So <laughs> eh, they're not taking enough to be to be a huge issue, though. That we see, you know, that we know about. No, it's true. Okay, Mark. Now that I've asked two of the weirdest questions ever, it's over to you, my friend. I would say that was a curveball through me for a minute. I was like, where are I we know. going with Did this? Oh, yeah. I, That's the whiskey talking. Yeah, I, I, that was 100% the whiskey and the hot toddies there. So, yeah, so yeah, we all wish you well, uh, yes. Erica. Get better. Get better. Uh, but um, all right. So, final question. All right. This is, this is the hot seat question. Ready? Ready? Are you ready for this? Okay, yes, which don't. edition do you prefer of Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, I like first My edition. Honest the answer would the probably mage with be the fireball. Five. Which one? Uh, I my first video game was Neverwinter Nights ah. by Bioware for the uh, for Windows ninety four. If you remember the modems killing computers yeah. to come to life, uh, and that was. I watched my dad play it. And I think it was like one of one of two video games he ever played in front of me that you know that I didn't ask him to do with me. And I really enjoyed that in the three, but I was honestly too young to really appreciate in person uh, third rule set Dungeons and Dragons. And by the time that I was old enough to do that on my own, eh, nobody liked four. So we were using 3.5. And, and then when 5 came out, it just simplified a lot of things, made it easier to play, maybe not necessarily as, as over-the-top funny to play because you can get some fun stuff with the way skills used to be. But I really, really enjoyed playing with it and uh, making characters with even characters that didn't work. Because I, I I had a, a halfling ranger with a beast companion, and that's that's just not a the DM was the numbers guy, so it was already a poor choice. But I didn't understand that at the time. No. But it was it was fun the role play as, and I think at the end of the day, having fun with it was was the benefit that I could find. Three point five was the best for that. It was. It was fine. I agree. Okay. So shameless self-promotion time, Falcon. Where can people find you and your books? So I primarily publish on Amazon, uh, the under the name Jeffrey Falcon Lowe. I have about mm, I forget 19 or 20 books, I believe, on there. And then my newest book is going out to beta readers either tomorrow or the day after to be published there. My website is www.slime-verse.com. And that has my book links and some on my video game that making. And then hopefully I'll be able to add some more interesting stuff to there with other projects like uh, my furniture and charcuterie boards. And finally, the Facebook group I created and run is Dungeon Core. And Core is in C-O-R-P-S. And that's where me and all the other Dungeon Core writers uh, you know, we post stuff, we ask for beta readers, and it's a fun little community within the lit RPG community. Nice. Very, very cool. Well, it has been awesome having you on the podcast with the podcast <laughs> with us. Wow, podcat. We need a podcat. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. We have a dog. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. That'll I have two dogs and two cats. I'm going to go make one of them a podcast. Okay. Oh but it has been amazing having you on the podcast with us. Mark, thank you so much for being my co-host. Oh, Eerie thank Travel. you. Thank you. But looking forward to recording our next episode of Eerie Travels soon. So watch that on your, your podcaster of choice. Yes, exactly. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, please leave comments, leave reviews. We love to hear them. Our authors love to hear them. So please absolutely do that. And we will see you guys next time.